everybody, and thank you so much for joining us today um, to give our host a little introduction. My name is Hannah, and I'm a third year student at UC in Natural Science, and with me today is Ryan and Camilla. Uh, Ryan, do you want to give yourself a quick intro? Sure. So I'm finishing my fourth year at the University of Ottawa, uh, studying a double major in political science and criminology. Uh, I've only been with YCR for about a year and two months now, so it's starting to get quite long. But uh, yeah, I'm very excited for this uh, this talk today. I'll send it over to Camilla. Uh, sure. So uh, I am an environmental uh, science study, and I am uh, from uh, Quebec. Uh, so I'm studying at the uh, University of Sherbrooke, and I joined uh, YCR in December of last year. So uh, I'm pretty new as well. Awesome. Thank you so much, you guys. Um, so welcome back to YCR's Food for Thought series. For those of you who are just seeing YCR for the first time, we are an advocacy group uh, made by students and young professionals for students and young professionals. We believe that Canada can have a strong future in resources, the economy, and the environment. Please feel free to connect with us at any time on our social media, such as Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn. All of them are at YC Resources if you want to learn more about what we do. Today, we are super stoked to have Kelly Cooper joining us today. Uh, Ms. Cooper is the founder and president of the Center for Social Intelligence. Ms. Cooper works with leaders and change agents to create a diversity, equity, and inclusion transformation within their organizations. She, she recently authored a book entitled Lead the Change, the Competitive Advantage of Gender Diversity and Inclusion. It targets decision makers to explain the value purport, oh my goodness, proposition and provides a blueprint on how to take action. She's the DEI expert co-leading the Free to Grow in Forestry Initiative with the Canadian Institute of Forestry, also known as CIF. She was a finalist last year for the Women in Inspiration Awards. She's also the podcast host for Free to Grow in Forestry and brings in great guests to share their perspectives of everyone in the forest sector from the C-suite to transgender and gays, as well as other experts that explain issues such as allyship, racism, and gender-based violence and how corporations have a role in making a positive change. Kelly has a science degree from the University of Toronto and a master's degree in international environment development and policy from the University of Sussex. She brings 30 years of experience on sustainable development to the table uh, with the last 10 years being focused on uh, social entrepreneurship. Just before I hand the floor over here, please know that attendees are encouraged to ask questions at the presentation using the Q&A box below and we'll address all of these at the end of the presentation. So thank you so much uh, for joining us today, Kelly. I'll uh, go ahead and share my screen and I'll get out of your way. Wonderful. Well, thanks for that lovely introduction and uh, welcome everyone. I'm excited to be here. I'm always pumped to talk to students and, and engage with conversation on what we're doing here in uh, the forest sector. Um, and I'm also excited about what you guys are doing with this advocacy group. I mean, I think it's great. So thank you for having me here today. I'm going to be speaking with you today about the uh, Free to Grow in Forestry initiative, which really is about focusing on increasing the number of women and other underserved people in senior executive roles and technical positions in the forest sector. Um, did you want to put up the presentation, Anna? There we go. Okay, hang on a second. You just changed my screen here. Yeah, can you see it all okay? Yeah. Awesome. Thanks. So, um, okay, next slide, please. A little context uh, about me beyond the bio. Um, I spent my career working in the sustainable development space. The first 20 years was on the environmental side, focusing on issues like climate change. Back in the time when we were leading up to the Kyoto Protocol, which is where countries first made their commitment to reducing greenhouse gas emissions, emissions which was about 25 years ago now. Um, oceans, I helped write the Oceans Act for Canada in the early 2000s, and many other global common issues. I was involved in a lot of initiatives, basically, that were trying to sort out how to place a dollar value on the environment, like the value of air and making a business out of it, like emissions trading schemes, and other things like closed loop systems on factories of all kinds that started to emerge in an effort to reduce GHGs. This was also back in the day when we were trying to figure out how to divert garbage from the landfill and businesses started to emerge on recycling and composting. About 10 years ago, I decided I wanted to pursue the social side of sustainable development. So I switched gears and began doing research to explain how do you get your return on investment from the social side. 
It didn't make sense to me that you would fund social events or give money to community activities to attend an environmental assessment process. And my research helped me realize that it wasn't just uh, it wasn't a return on your on your dollar from giving money in that manner, but rather the economic returns from investing in your people and your workplace culture. That led me to writing the book called Lead the Change, which Hannah introduced. Um, and it targets the executives and decision makers on explaining the value proposition of DEI and, and provides a blueprint for them to, on how to take action. Um, I've been humbled to see how it has benefited so many executives in the forest sector. It's opened up many conversations and doors for me to help executives in the forest sector with getting past why they have to do something and getting on with how to go about it. The other thing to note is she mentioned is that I'm the DEI expert for that is quarterbacking the Free to Grow and Forestry Initiative, which I'll be speaking to you about today. Next slide, please. So to start, I thought I'd clarify what the impetus was behind this initiative in the first place. As many of you probably know, this country faces a labor market shortage and the forest sector is not immune to this. We knew baby boomers were retiring at an alarming rate. And when we took a close look at the staff on gender diversity, which was the initial focus of this initiative back in 2018, it showed that women make up only 17% of the forest sector labor force and underrepresented groups even less. Research shows that women leave the sector within first five years of their career. And so the question we wanted to pursue was why? So we started out to identify the barriers for women, and they included persistent wage, wage gaps, low retention rates, lack of advancement, opportunities, mentors, or sponsors, and network. And with the underlying issue being the workplace culture, meaning male-dominated traditional leadership and harassment, among other things. We wanted to tackle these barriers and ensure that all people could work in the forest sector and simultaneously address the labor market demand issues. Next slide, please. So how did things get started? I had led the development of a mining national action plan in 2014 to 2017. I brought together 12 mining companies and two mining associations in Canada and formed a steering committee. The idea was that we would collaboratively develop a national action plan that aims to increase the number of women in senior roles and technical positions, and then have that the participating companies take those best practices, tools, and tactics into their own companies to positively impact their workplace culture. On the heels of that wrapping up, the forest sector approached me and asked if they could do something similar for the forest sector. Having learned from the mining sector initiative, I decided to do things a little bit differently and thought I'd form a partnership with the Canadian Institute of Forestry. So I'd be aligned with a forest organization, lending greater credibility to my efforts straight out of the gate. I pursued funding in 2017 and in 2018, funding was secured from both the federal government and the private sector to develop a national action plan over a three-year period. A multi-stakeholder committee was created to help steer the development of this national action plan. And beyond, I went beyond mining in the sense that I had just mining sector folks for, uh, sorry, private sector mining companies for the mining project. For, for the fourth sector, I decided the stakeholders should be represented by the public, private, not-for-profit, academic, and indigenous groups across Canada. That way it would be more comprehensive. Next slide, please. So together, the steering committee, we came up with a vision for the sector, a new vision, that Canada has a diverse and inclusive workforce that provides the foundation for a thriving forest sector and healthy communities. And together, we made a joint commitment to work collaboratively across the forest sector to engage, attract, retain, and advance underrepresented groups at all levels. Next slide, please. The goal of the initiative in phase one was to create gender equality, regardless of race or religion, in the sector by increasing the number of women in senior roles and technical positions, explaining the benefits to men of having women in the sector, creating allies and champions across the forest sector, and by doing so, improving the economic competitiveness of it. Next slide. The first phase of this initiative was what we called Vision to Action, where we collectively created a national action plan that looked at the barriers to women and other underrepresented groups and identified actions to pursue to address those barriers. Next slide. We're gonna have a lot more conversation after this. <laughs> this slide shows all the things that we created. I know there's a lot here to walk through, but bear with me. It's all worth noting because so much was accomplished. The National Action Plan was broken down into three main pillars of activity. 
The first one we call building the evidence base. And in that pillar of work, we established a baseline of data for the very first time and brought together information from various pockets, such as the federal government, provincial governments and regulators, FPAC, which is the Forest Products Association of Canada, the CIF members and membership, which is across Canada, and many others. Through that process, we identified data gaps to pursue. That was the extent of what we set out to do in this pillar, but we went beyond that. We also created for the very first time gender equality principles for the sector. And we did a qualitative study that showed Indigenous women, women as leaders, not as victims, as they had been re represented in the past. The second pillar we called fostering an inclusive culture. In this pillar, we did a scan of all the best practices out there on creating gender equality and looked for new ways to add value to this important topic. And given I had just gone through a lot of this with the mining sector, I kind of had all those resources at my fingertips to know where we had gaps. At that time, there was a lot of talk about what this issue is, but there was nothing on how to actually do anything to make a change in it. So we identified three areas of study and reports were developed on each. They included how to overcome resistance to diversity and inclusion in the workplace, how to be an, uh, an inclusive leader, and how to be an effective ally. All three of these reports can be found on the Free to Grow website, and through my website at the Center for Social Intelligence. They're also on the FPAC website under their 2021 annual report. The third pillar of activity we called repositioning the sector and it formed the basis of creating the brand free to grow, which for those who don't know, this phrase was chosen because in the forest sector, when a forest no longer requires human intervention, it is deemed free to grow. We applied that phrase to the social context and say that all people are free to grow in their careers in the forest sector. We also developed the Free to Grow in Forestry website, a monthly newsletter, and went beyond our initial plans and started a podcast that engages everyone from the C-suite to transgender people, to two-spirited people, all telling us about their experience in the forest sector in an effort to learn and understand each other better in a non-confrontational way. Next slide, please. Phase one was a huge success. We had raised awareness on this important topic, met all of the deliverables we set out to do and went beyond them as well. We had created momentum and were encouraged to keep going. And so we did. Funding was again pursued and we were thrilled when it was approved. Phase two started in 2021 and is going to culminate in the spring of 24. We call it moving from action to traction, where we're focusing on engaging and training forest sector leaders and employees to foster an inclusive workplace culture. Next slide, please. Think of the goals for phase two as zeroing in on pillar two and three activities from phase one, meaning a focus on fostering an inclusive workplace culture and on communication. So building off the three reports that we created in phase one that I mentioned, the forest sector asked for those to be made into online training. That is what formed the rationale for going back for further funding. So that's what we got busy doing. The initial intent was to create online training modules and follow it up with in-person training so it could really be cemented and applied. However, COVID interfered with that idea and funding was tough to find to support all of that. Nevertheless, you can access these training modules on the Free to Grow website now, and we have pivoted to virtual workshops so that everyone can access them. We want to engage as many executives and middle managers and students who are coming online into the sector as we can on, on these materials um, because we believe they're useful for shifting the workplace culture. And we've also created communication tools for easy use by anyone to apply in their own context. Next slide. So I want to take a moment here now and share this quote with you, because we believe at Free to Grow that it's through empowering executives and managers, most of which are men in the forest sector, that we can make a big difference on shifting the workplace culture. I'll read it out loud. When a male ally speaks up. He's not only affecting change in the room at that moment, he's inviting and empowering the next generation of men to use him as a courageous exemplar. And that is how we change the culture. This quote speaks to the essence of what we are aiming to do here in phase two. Some people say our focus on the white man is not right, but we say that the great majority in the forest sector are white men, especially in Canada, and we have to start somewhere. Next slide, please. Initially, we set up two executive leadership teams, one in the East and one in the West. 
There were approximately 20 executives in each team. However, there was growing interest from folks beyond these two teams that also wanted to learn what we were doing. And so we were encouraged to pivot to this platform approach, opening up the workshop to engage everyone. Next slide. So there are three training opportunities that we're uh, focusing in on. Each workshop will have a review of one of the three topics that uh, are a part of the free to grow learnings and also include other guest speakers as well. In December, for example, we focused on the how to overcome resistance module, plus had a discussion on understanding privilege from another DEI expert, and as well had a forest stewardship council uh, share with us what they're doing to improve things for indigenous people in the forest sector. We're going to do another virtual workshop in the spring and fall of 2023. The spring walk workshop is going to be held on April 27th, so you can mark your calendar if you're interested, and we'll focus in on how to be a role model and how to be an ally in DEI. Understanding bystander syndrome, and then uh, of course the free to grow training we have on how to be an effective ally. In the fall, we are going to hold another webinar that's going to focus on mentoring and sponsorship, creating psychologically safe work environments, and the free to grow training on inclusive leadership. Although not on this screen, we may also hold a final workshop where we look at case studies, including the lessons learned from the free to grow and forestry initiative, so we can share our learnings with other countries. We've also managed to secure a spot to speak at the World Forest Congress in 2024 on the successful pilot of Free to Grow. Next slide, please. Our communication efforts are also very exciting. We are creating communication tools that can allow any company or organization in the forest sector to use them. It doesn't have to be just in Canada, to use the messages and tactics in your own sphere of influence. So keep an eye out on the Free to Grow website and follow us on social media to find out when they'll be available. We're trying to have those start off in the next month or two. We develop a communication strategy and outlined a number of exciting communication tactics that are gonna to start to roll out, as I say, in the next couple of months. Tools like short videos that help explain why this issue is important. Social media templates that anyone can use in their organization or company that show support for Free to Grow. So whether you're here in Canada or in the States, we're getting a lot of interest in the States because uh, as you know, uh, the forest sector companies often are headquartered in the States. Another exciting action that's already happening in phase two is that our initial two executive leadership teams all signed off on our declaration of intent to DEI. We shared that on social media at the beginning of the National Forest Week in late September of 22. You can also find it on our website. We're now inviting any other company or organization to join us and essentially declare your commitment to DEI. And uh, if you want to do that, just uh, look out, like I say, next month, there's going to be an option to, to onboard through the website. Next slide, please. So our next steps, we're uniting as a sector, and we're showing the world that through our efforts on DEI, this sector gets it. We know there are workplace culture issues that need attention, and we're taking leadership to do something about it. We want to empower leaders and create champions that go beyond the two executive leadership teams. We're going to use the free to grow platform for webinars and communications and distinguish the forest sector as an employer of choice. By doing so, we hope to attract and retain new labor talent and create the competitive advantage for the forest sector. Next slide. So for any more information about it, please contact us on the website through social media, contact me directly, obviously. And I encourage you all to sign up for the, the Free to Grow and Forestry newsletter because it uh, sends out monthly actions that we're doing and things to look out for. That's all I had to say for you today. That is fantastic. Thank you so much for your presentation today.